Welcome to Evicted by Greed. Greed is human, but not all humans are always greedy. And there are some structures that facilitate greed and make, make it more problematic than others. Housing is where money and life meets. Around the world, more than 50% of the national wealth is tied up in housing. And for most people, the house is the most important, the biggest investment of their lifetime, or if they live for rent, eats up 30% or even more of their income permanently. So in housing, greed is particularly big and particularly painful. I live in Berlin, more exactly in Kreuzberg, which is one of the recent centers of greedy evictions. And I'll present you some numbers, structures and examples from here to explain what happens when greed means eviction. So Berlin and more importantly Kreuzberg are very special. In Berlin, 85% of the population lives for rent. In Kreuzberg, that number goes up to 95%. So that is, at least to my knowledge, the highest proportion of people not living in their own house in the whole world. And even the capitals of financial markets like New York or London have much, much lower numbers. So Berlin is a city of tenants. Kreuzberg is the center of tenants. Second, Berlin has been privileged with rather low prices in comparison to other global metropolis for a very long time, but has seen a very sharp increase in very recent times. So if you look back in 1996, we had seen a small housing boom at that time after reunification and housing prices went up to 2000 euros per square meter. But now since 2012, 13, 14, they have reached um, actually nearly 6000 um, euros per square meter. So they have tripled over the last uh, few years. And if you look, if you compare this house price increase to the increase of the cost of living, you can see that this price increase was not a, an increase in the price of living and not an increase in the salaries equally, but it was mainly an increase in the price of the privilege to live in the center of the city or to own land there. And in Kreuzberg, this concentrated um, price increase meets very strong activism and also very left politics, the most left politics of, the, of Germany probably. Um, so we have a rent freeze agreed here very recently. We have a campaign to expropriate landlords with more than 3000 apartments. Uh, and we have a lot of initiatives working to understand what is happening here, but we have a very big data problem. The last and very incomplete ownership information of the city that we have dates back to the census of 2011. And we can't access the land register um, to structurally collect data about the land ownership. And even if we could and where we can in, with individual tenants, we find a lot of anonymous companies. So as a result, the city has no clue who owns more than 3000 apartments in the city. We don't have any good and reliable statistics on rents here in the city. And we'll have to be innovative to get this data and to get this, collect this information. Wem gehört die Stadt of the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation is a project that is trying to do exactly that. It's trying to help the different initiatives working in the city with tenants and collecting data from different sources to put all the pool this data, analyze it, uh, and work with it. And at the moment we have, um, I will show you, I will show you two intermediate results of that work. And that is uh, an ongoing process. First of all, owners in the city very often remain anonymous. We looked at more than 400 corporate owners from our data collection, and we saw that one third of them remained anonymous despite very detailed research. And that has basically two reasons. One 
and that is responsible for a bit less than half of the cases the beneficial ownership register that Germany and other European countries have implemented doesn't work or is not implemented properly in Germany at least and for the other half investment funds and similar investment vehicles they don't they register their ownership only in a privately managed register that is not accessible to the public or even the public authorities and so to the public um, they remain anonymous in most of the cases second nearly half of berlin of the city is owned by financial markets and big wealth you don't have to see and understand this graph fully at, at one grasp but we're going to go through them and look at each of the individual ownership structures and groups uh, and bring also some examples and then get back to this graph at the end our first group are the tenants themselves as we've already seen tenants own around 15 percent of the buildings in berlin and only five percent of the apartments here in kreuzberg and you'd think that there's no space for greed at least in this case but that's not true selling expensive apartments is one of the most popular strategy for financial market investors to leave the market and to realize the gains so they try to extract all the value increases from buying cheap and then selling as expensive as possible so the new tenant that arrives and buys his own apartment um, pays a lot of money and then for a long time in his life will have to give a big, very big part of his salary to repay this big purchase price and his loans that he took from the bank usually with some hefty interest on top or when the, when the conservative federal government here in Germany tried to subsidize ownership and by giving money to families to buy houses that basically just increase those prices, increase the profits that the owners can make um, and didn't really help um, the tenants. If you believe the house owners lobby, more than half of the rental houses are owned by small private landlords. So in the newspaper, they're always the nice lady from upstairs. Um, but for our second ownership group, I split that differently and I'll explain why. I estimate that around 17.5% of the houses are owned directly by private people. So there's direct interaction between your owner and the tenant. So you have a chance to know them. And some tenants have very good experience and actually have a very nice uh, and approachable um, landlord. But those individuals can also often be greedy. And they have one special kind of eviction in the German law, they can claim that they need the apartments for themselves or for their family, the so-called Eigenbedarfskündigung, and we see that this is one of the main reasons for evictions at the moment. And there was one case with a local conservative politician and notary who owns more than 40 houses here in Berlin, which is more than 100 million euros worth of real estate, and he used evictions on behalf of his daughter and on behalf of his extended family many many times he didn't move in the apartments himself uh, he just used the eviction as an excuse to kick out the old or he used the he used the need as an excuse to kick out the old tenants and move in someone who paid more money for him and the second part of this um, private owners I estimate to be 20% um, very wealthy and very hidden indirect investors. So because those people are so wealthy, they usually employ managers to take care of their wealth and often don't know exactly what is happening in their name, which makes greed much easier for them, much more bearable. And for the tenants, it's often very impossible to know who they are or often very difficult to know and to tell what is happening in their name because they can't find them. They just find the managers and the lawyers and don't have any chance to appeal to morals. We have two very recent examples for this kind of owner and investor. One is the Pierce family from the UK that inherited a lot of wealth from their, from their 
parents and they're hiding behind companies in Luxembourg, Cyprus and the BVI. Um, and own, our research has found more than 6,000 apartments or about 6,000 apartments here in the city. A second example is the case of the bookstore Kish & Co in Oranje Straße 25. The bookstore there that is facing eviction in his research only found lawyers from Liechtenstein and from Germany and some investment managers from the UK being responsible for their buildings, but they couldn't find the real owners behind the building. Our research points to a very wealthy family from Sweden and the UK. Those are the heirs of the Tetra Pak um, company empire. Um, and especially two women, two daughters of the uh, of the company family. And they are mainly active as philanthropists. So basically they're doing good things with the money they own in a bad way, earn in a bad way. And together with the bookstore, we're trying to contact them and we're trying to explain to them that doing good with money earned in a bad way is not a very good idea. The third group of owners are listed companies and that's a Berlin special. Usually companies, listed companies, professional investors prefer commercial real estate because you have very big transactions, you buy supermarkets, hotels, shopping centers and you deal with professional tenants. That is much easier, much more straightforward. But here in Berlin, those listed companies own more than 10% of the houses and the Deutsche Wohnen is one of the biggest and most prominent, owning 111,000 apartments on their own. Often these listed companies are former financial market investors that then were uh, listed on the stock exchange as an exit option from the market for the investors. But if you look at the ownership structure, you will see that these companies basically introduce another layer of management, uh, the management of the listed company. And behind them, again, you have anonymous owners. Um, some of them are the nice old lady from Berlin who buys stocks at, this, at the stock exchange. Anyone can buy any small amount of stocks. But the majority of stocks is again owned by another indirect layer by managers, by wealth managers for the very rich, by um, professional investors from pension funds and behind them again, completely anonymous, um, all different kinds of owners. Closely related to the listed companies are the professional investors, not only because they hold the majority of stocks in the listed company, um, but also because they own um, apartments themselves. So I estimate this to be around 10%. And those professional investors are pension funds with a more traditional long-term outlook, but also private equity funds like Blackstone. And they are as anonymous as the listed companies. The owners behind them are as anonymous, but they're much less visible than the listed companies. And very often they're more aggressive. That's why the film Push calls them the extractive industry, because their main purpose is to extract value from any market, be it housing or anything else, as quickly as possible and then leave. And I'll give you one example from Kreuzberg, what this can mean to an individual house. So here in Sosna Straße, there's a house that was bought in 2012 from a wealthy individual that was suffering after the financial crisis that had taken too big on two big loans. And it was bought by a UK investment company for around 1000 euros per square meter, which at that time was something like 1 million euros. In the next six years, those investors optimized rents. This means they tried to increase it wherever the law allowed and then sold the house in a bigger package, put it in a bigger package and sold it uh, to the next financial markets investor, Blackstone. And in this six years, they increased the value of the house from 1000 euros per square meter to 3500 euros per square meter and made a profit of 2.5 million euros for themselves and for their investors. And if you, we looked at it, in this case, the profit was split half and half. So the managers, um, made one point more than one million and the investors the other half. 
I know what Blackstone is going to do with this house. Most likely they're going to increase the rent further. And most likely a lot of the value from this house is going to leave Berlin. It's going to end up with Blackstone and Blackstone CEO Mr. Schwar and founder Mr. Schwarzman will take out 7,000 euros of rent each year to pay himself 500 million US dollars as an annual income. And probably Blackstone is hoping to sell the house even more expensively either to another investor or if those investors can't be found as individual apartments um, to tenants. And one possible solution with a much more democratic um, decision making are the houses owned by the city itself. And in Berlin, that's about 17.5%. And uh, this part of the market is growing. The city is trying to buy and is trying to build. But there's one main problem. The city has sold very cheap in the past. So the city has sold a lot of um, social uh, city-owned housing at a very low price when the prices were still 1,000 euros per square meter and is now trying to buy back very expensively. And also the city finds too little land actually to build on. And that's where the idea to expropriate actually comes from. To expropriate at the initial value at 1000 euros or anything close to that. Um, basically to build a stock of um, community owned housing and land. The second group of um, nicer, more tenant controlled uh, groups are the cooperatives. They own another 10% of the city land and there's around 80 um, co cooperatives. Most of them founded long ago, 100, 150 years ago, when it was still subsidized to start a cooperative, when it was fashionable to start a cooperative. And they're usually quite good for the members because they keep the rent rather constant and low, at least in the current market conditions. So you still find rents of five or six euros in the cooperative. But they're not always the best for the city because they can be very exclusive only for their members. Um, and might not always have the good of the city at the heart of their decision making. Summing up and going back to our initial graph, more than half of the city is not owned by tenants or democratically controlled institutions, but private investors. And with less than half, marked here in red, is owned by professional investors or through complex and anonymous structures that facilitate greed. And how to deal with them and the resulting greed is gonna be the focus of this conference. I wish ourselves very good luck with that. Thank you.